Hey, what's up, guys? We are here with uh, TCU versus UT San Antonio for the final game, last game of the set. Uh, right off the bat, Zoe goes down. Yeah, identical bans from the last two games. Actually, uh, Zoe and Camille are going to get this, uh, pulled away from both from both sides here. I think definitely some. Comp it's got to be a combination of target ban and meta ban. The speaking of target bans, there's one in Asian taking away Varus. Despite having first pick on blue side, they're not going to elect for that one this time around. Yeah, it's crazy how uh, once something gets picked in the LCS, it immediately becomes popularized in all other types of play, including collegiate esports, I guess so. Mm -hmm. um, There's a reason they're the best of them. Yep. Uh, just by the way, I'm your new caster, just subbing in for this final game. My name is Albert, or at, as my tag is, uh, as they collide. Passing here with uh, my boy Justin. Yep, my... Yep, name's Justin. Also go by Small Flareon on League and various other gaming outlets. So we've got the ban phase, final ban coming in for the first side. Kog'Maw's gonna get taken away from the side, from Arborary once again. Um, yep, Kog'Maw actually a really, really strong pick right now. They're actually nerfing him in the next patch. They just released those patch notes today, and uh, his maximum health percentage on his Bioarcane Barrage is actually getting nerfed by 2% at max level. Right, Sechuani was previously banned away up in the last two games, and now first picked by Wante Asian, so I guess that was the one that they were electing for over the Varus. An interesting decision, I think. Sechuani yeah, really is very popular that. in pro play right now, for sure. Oh, definitely. You see Sejuani picked every game if it's left open. Uh, it looks like they're... Yeah, it looks like TC is prioritizing that Zaya pick. Uh, really strong at the disengage, and her invulnerability on her ultimate is a good tool to escape from on all the CC that Sejuani herself is going to put out. Yeah, we saw Hello, I'm Hank pull her out last game. Not enough disengage to save herself too too often. You know, you saw like a couple good feather storms to dodge some very target or some very important spells, but unfortunately, just wasn't enough to have a good game. The Varus was on the other side that time um, in Arborary's hands, and as we've seen so so far, Zaya Zaya is going to have to step up to fill the shoes that that Varus leaves. Now that uh, he's been banned out from the third match. Yeah, definitely. It looks like San Antonio, they are really prioritizing those AD carry bans. They're pretty afraid. Oh, well, the down goes the Tarek. They're really opt opting for utility and a lot of defense. So you can see that they actually banned out two ADCs over uh, TCU. Uh, it looks like they'll just have to go with the Zaya, and it looks like they're going for an engage comp. Uh, we'll have to see if Zaya actually can hold down the floor just like a Cog or a Varus can late game. Uh, it looks like... San Antonio wants to play the late game, which is why they banned out those three champions. And there it is, the Tristana pick. And pick Tristana. Good prediction, Albert. Um, looking at the side, look at, let's, let's see how TCU is going to respond to this. Bot lanes for both teams already locked in, so they have they are forced a little bit to do a first pick if they don't want to counteract that Sejuani, if they don't want to play their hand early. Time's ticking, though. Libra not showing anything just yet. There's the Orn. Orn now played three games in a row. Yep. A very strong top lane pick, just pretty much in general. Really hard to lane against with uh, how well he sustains and his ability to stay in lane um, without having to back for items. And then the shield that he gets, just making trading against him so hard. Yeah, Banning phase what, number two starts off. See what these uh, these teams are going for the bans. They're, they're waiting a little bit on this ban, and down goes Zara. So I'm not really sure. That's probably a target then, because there's nothing specific to that comp that a Xerath would really make good. Um, and down goes the Orianna. Yeah, they're really trying to negate the late game and the uh, the, the late game power of TC's pick, as well as the uh, the team comp or the team fight comp. Yeah, we saw Infernal Susan pull out the Xerath last game, not not really making too much of an impact overall. I think just getting sat on by the uh, LeBlanc early and it just went all downhill from there forced to build a Banshee's Veil early and then never really able to capitalize on on his range and able to kite back well enough during team fights to stay alive so the last ban going to be Azir probably the best mid laner four mid, lanes ban, four mid lane bans in that last uh, ban phase squeezing the options a little bit on the side of uh, San Antonio right now when they're forced yep. to, when they're forced well I, I guess on both teams actually yeah, both teams actually really focusing hard down the mid. Uh, fun fact, when I joined TC at first, I thought uh, in the creation of this esports team, I thought I was going to be probably the highest ranked player until I met Ryan and Lemur, and he ended up being a challenger player who wow. made mid lane, and he is just absolutely incredible. 
uh, and has a very nice champion pool. So we'll see if they can, if those bans can stop him or not, because Azir and Oriana just overall are extremely good picks. Yeah, Lemur has been going absolutely off tonight. Um, it's, we've seen both AD carries do very well, but Lemur has been consistently performing um, in, in almost every scenario. I think the first game, the Talia, pulling off quite a few 2v1s and, and as LeBlanc just absolutely demolishing the squishy members of the enemy team. Malzahar is going to be the pick up for San Antonio. We'll have to see how Lemur counters that one because that could be a very oppressive pick in the mid lane. Yeah, well, we're going to see uh, PCU hovering. All right, Talia is locked in. Uh, it looks like TCU's comp is very, very roam heavy. Talia with her ultimate teleport going down on Orn, of course, and their team comp is not looking too shabby right now. Uh, on the other side, San Antonio looks to be playing a team fight slash pick comp uh, oriented team. With that, Malzahar. Hopefully, we'll be seeing some roams on the Malzahar or maybe some counter roams. Uh, but it's going to be hard to catch up to Talia. Yeah, maybe the best that they can hope for is a nice, well-placed GP ultimate as soon as she roams down in the bottom lane. And I think Nick and Nick and Lemur both being very high-ranked players, we've seen how, how well they play the early game together. Um, no doubt that's going to be their game plan going forward. Uh, Nick, last game, had a very good time uh, picking up three kills early on Kane, and he gets, the, he gets his hands on that one once again. Maybe this time playing off a, a little bit better with Talia than in the first game. We noticed that... I, th I think a game one like there was there was a slightly botched two v one attempt by Lemur that caused him to caused him to die without getting any kills. But if that had gone differently, it could have been a very different game one. And this is probably going to be a little bit of a redemption arc for Lemur on Talia. Oh, definitely. Uh, it actually looks like Lemur's opting for that cleanse. That cleanse is a really strange pick, considering you can't exactly cleanse Malzahar's uh, Nether Grasp. Uh, mostly going to be opting to cleanse either. Sejuani's uh, Permafrost or Tarek Stun, but that's pretty much it. Uh, maybe a little bit of a mistake? I'm not sure. I won't doubt Ryan. You know, he, he always has his... He, Lemur always has his reasons. Yeah, with with the advent of Unsealed Spellbook, it's so hard It's so hard to make those calls in Champ Select as as casters nowadays. Um, let, let's, hope he has, let's hope he has kept that in mind. Let's hope he didn't take a Riot support on Twitter to heart too seriously when they when they <laughs> <laughs> advise taking cleanse against Malzahar and uh, a little bit of a gaff on their part. But meanwhile, with, on the other side, double TPs for both Malzahar and Gangplank. We've seen both teams play so aggressively as as five early on in the game. I think, for example, last game, seven minutes in, there was already a five-man brawl in the mid lane. No doubt this game's going, or no doubt San Antonio's going to be looking to make that happen this game. Trying to match that Talia yeah. on, on a roam. Does allow Talia to take something like cleanse, but again, we'll see if definitely that, how she uses that spell. It looks like uh, I think we're gonna want to look out for this uh, this bot lane aggression. I'm assuming Kane uh, Nick is going to be starting. Let's see what side is that going to be starting red and going blue and then routing his jungle towards the bot lane. Uh, Zaya and Alistar are very aggressive lane compared to Tristan and Tarek, who are pretty weak until levels uh, until around level three. Uh, so I think we should be seeing some pressure, you know, some weather forecast pressure <laughs> on <laughs> over there on the bot lane. And we'll definitely have to see what the mid lane has to offer us. Uh, a really intense matchup, Talia versus Malzahar. Yeah, there's a storm coming in towards the bot side of the map. Meanwhile, on the top side, I, I haven't seen Orin do too badly in the laning phase yet tonight. I think last game was a little bit little bit of a little couple mistakes that just added up that didn't allow Orn and Orn being also being the only front line in that team comp. I don't think it was just enough for one champion to be able to handle. But we'll see this time. I think it's he's been up against a different pick every single game. Maybe GP's the one that's going to show him who's boss up in top lane. And Kleptomancy GP in his current state is very oppressive and he, not as if GP didn't get enough bonus gold just laning but laning and doing his thing already. Yeah, we're going to have to look out for that Kleptomancy GP. It does offer so much in lane just because you can get so many resources. Gold packets. Oh my god. What were they thinking? But uh, <laughs> that has been changed. You know, Ezreal isn't completely broken anymore. Um, but GP definitely able to utilize that with that on-hit uh, on hit parlay. And here we go into the loading screen. Let's see if we can confirm all of those summoners, or uh, runes rather, that all the players have taken. And what? Uh -oh. I've got a not client not responding. One second, uh, please stand by. Yep. 
I think maybe that was a continuation of that lobby bug, us not being able to invite, or not being able to be invited to that last game. Oh, I am loading in, so yep. hopefully you can get in. Are you Perfect. in? Perfect. Yep, All I'm right, in. Cool. We are good. Stream is live. All right, so Malzahar actually opting for Arcane Comet. I'm kind of surprised it's not Airy. Airy definitely free poke damage, uh, but Arcane do Comet does a scale in terms of damage just a little bit better. Let's see. Nothing too out of the ordinary uh, going up top lane as well. Both runes, uh, rune setups, pretty standard. Orn's just definitely uh, going to be trying to make it to that mid game with that grass of the um, dying and stacking up that health throughout the early game. Is is that grasp? That that doesn't look like grasp. Uh... Oh, is that aftershock? Sorry, I'm not familiar with the... Uh, yeah, I'm comment. trying to go off images. I actually had to make flashcards for myself when the, new, uh, <laughs> when the new season started because there was so much new stuff to learn. That is actually Aftershock. Sejuani also elected to go for Aftershock. Um, Same with Alistar. So it looks like a triple Aftershock game. It, it, is such uh, a strong, it is such a strong rune. It's just looking at the values that uh, individual runes tend to give you. I think Aftershock gives you like 70 to 120 bonus armor and magic resist for 2.5 seconds. That's... That's a um, that's better than um, Leona W right that's off the ridiculous. bat. Yeah. Considering uh, Aftershock uh, really comboing well with all of those champions, uh, Orn with his natural tankiness as well as Sejuani and her passive gives her, I believe, 70% armor uh, while it is up before it breaks. And obviously Alistar's ultimate reducing so much damage. Uh, it looks like... How are you loading in? Uh, we're good to go. Yeah, but I'm seeing people buy some items right now. There's the champions. There they are. I thought I was gonna have to play this entire game with, or cast this entire game without seeing any champion models. Just blind. <laughs> See some spell effects flying around, but no champion models. Yep. Here That'd we go. That'd be pretty interesting. Into the uh, into the laning or into the early game setup. It doesn't look like San Antonio is opting for any type of neither team opting for really any type of invading strat. Uh, pretty standard spots. Just watching all of the entrances. So we can actually see the stopwatch meta coming in. UT San Antonio having four stopwatches. The only person who does not have a stopwatch actually is the Sejuani. And on TCU, we have three stopwatches for the jungler and both bot lane. So we'll have to see how the stopwatches come in play. Uh, I remember when the stopwatches first came out, I was very, very lost because the first time I had seen one, I was trying to assassinate a Pantheon and he, zoned me. <laughs> he activated a Zonia's on me. And I was just dazed and confused. Mm -hmm. A little bit of extra CC to go along with that ability. You, you, not, not only are you able to stun champions, you can also stun players <laughs> with a good stopwatch use. Yeah, it looks like Nick is opting for that red star just as... Wait, I'm going down? Okay, he's starting Wraiths, and he's going to... I think he's going to move up to top lane. I, I this Maybe he's going to try and uh, abuse that early gameplay from the gameplay and uh, deny him those Kleptomancy stacks. Yeah, it's a little different from, from all the previous games that we've seen so far. Uh, this is the first game where either, I guess, any of the two junglers have started without a huge leash from their bot lane. We saw that Tarsier still went for that, but Nick? I, I'm think I'm hoping that he goes for something more aggressive early on if he's going to go for the rates into a, an immediate topside clear. Yeah, he definitely needs that early aggression. Uh, not too much happening ball lane either right now. Uh, so far, pretty standard safe start from both teams. And except for mid lane, mid lane uh, Lemur is pushing up really hard. Oh, and here we see a collapse onto the blue buff. They're going for the steal. Malzahar is a little bit late on the follow up. Let's see how this fight goes. Well, that's where that's where the uh, early clear on the, the chickens comes into play. Puts Lem or puts Nick in position to be able to make that blue buff steal happen, but I actually didn't really commit to it. I guess they saw Infernal Susan moving up and got antsy. Yeah, I think that was def that was definitely a worth trade. Look at look at this. Nick gets a scuttle crab, so he gets control of topside, and now Orn is a little bit safer up there. He scares Sejuani off blue buff, so she's forced to do Gromp, and she doesn't have any buffs, and it's pretty low for this blue buff. As well as Talia, uh, as well as Lemur, and that engage uh, got a lot of poke damage off on the Malzahar, and look at look at the pressure mid lane now. Malzahar is playing so scared, even more so than he was before. 
Yeah, a combination of Tal Talia having better level 1 and 2 wave clear, able to give Nick the space that he needed to move in, and then giving him such an advantage, because I think he, he definitely lost a wave or two to that turret while he had to move up in order to try to contest blue. And yeah, although Sejuani didn't end up losing that blue, it puts him so far behind. Yep, we can see they're getting a lot of deep vision control. Yeah, Shadow of is gonna get bumped in, but it puts him right in position for the Dazzle. But Nick is behind to back up Southwind and Co. The Blade's Reach is gonna get him for a little bit of a slow. Shadow Figure could be a little bit too far ahead now. The heal coming out from Hello, I'm Hank to keep him alive. So that was actually just a that was that was a, honestly a fine trade. What made up for it was actually Lemur. Uh, he was harassing. He was harassing the uh, the jungler as well as the mid laner. 2v1 down at the Wraiths. Uh, Sejuani still has not backed yet, so uh, knowing with that knowledge, Lemur came in and started harassing. Oh, it looked like, oh, he's out of mana. Otherwise, Lemur definitely could have killed that Malzahar right there. But yeah, he fended 2v1 off uh, from Malzahar and Sejuani and denied them that counter gank down bot lane. Yeah, he's been, he's been doing a lot of those this entire series. Just such a good player right now. A good knockup on the Wanted Asians. Pop the orange for a massive heal, but he's out of mana completely. And meanwhile, speaking of out of mana, Infernal Susan forced to wave clear under his turret without it. It's a little bit lower from the Unraveled Earth. Comet's going to try back a little bit, but Lemur's owning this lane right now. Yeah, he's going to force that back. And look at the CS lead growing. It's not going to help that uh, then Infernal Susan is going to lose an entire another wave. 13 CS lead right now for Lemur. So the teleport back, trying to negate the uh, the CS loss. And we'll see these buys. Opting for that lost chapter definitely needs that lost chapter to stay in the lane to harass even more in and out of laning phase uh, in the jungle, of course, because that is where Lemur likes to roam. Yeah, he's definitely not having any issues. And it's only going to make Infernal Susan's life even harder as he's forced to come back to lane without a completed secondary item. Yeah, so the gold leads, uh, there's actually no gold lead for either team right now. But if I had to give an edge, uh, it's not even just because I'm biased because I used to go to TCU. Uh, <laughs> there is a lot of vision control down in the bot lane. And it is cutting off a lot of gank roots for Sejuani. And because of that early harassment, she really can't. She's really just trying to catch up. Uh, look at her just farming. Uh, farming Gromp wall. Kane is almost has a significant EXP lead on him and looking for that gank mid right now. Let's see. Yeah, so earlier, despite blowing way more summoners during the earlier engage, Arborary and Southwind winning an easy trade. Wants an Asian also taking a bad chunk um, for the side of San Antonio. The shadowy figure is Tarek, does have the ability to heal up, and so does Gangplank, but I think. And he's already forced to blow the teleport in order to get back in a lane. Like, this lane, it's even in CS right now, but as as time goes on, could start to see that uh, lean a little bit more. Scuttle gets smited away by the Sejuani, and I'm actually a little bit mistaken. I'm not really sure if Malzahar's Void Links count as CS or not, but Lemur has been farming a lot of those as well. Uh, yeah. But we can just see the pressure, relentless pressure. We can see half mana and half health for Infernal Susan. And that last chapter really helping out. Look at that mana gain on the Wow. Lane. It's full stats right now. I have never and actually seen that in action before. That was that was really something else. He just regained 25 to 30 percent of his mana from just from that one item. Yep, as well as the mana flow bend uh, rune. Let's see. Nick opting for he they might go for a dive here. It's not exactly the safest considering a friend of the season just to level 6, but no, instead he's just gonna seal away these raids. A little bit of a scuffle here between Nick and Tarzir. It's a pretty slow game here overall, but it looks like both teams recognize that this, yep, this is an Infernal Drake, and they're trying to get a lot of vision on it. Looks like Tarek's getting caught. Okay, here we go. Shadow figure doesn't, didn't get snared by t by Zaya, but does have the flash. Oh, stopwatch, good reaction for the seismic shove. Doesn't get pushed back into the name too, but Southwind has the Zanyas away from the turret. Meanwhile, first blood picked up by Talia, despite not able to land the CC. Good pick up by them. Uh, Hello, I'm Hank is still trying to fight a little bit. Nick arriving a little bit late to the party, but one kill already picked up by the side of TCU. So stopwatch down for shadowy figure. That is huge because now they can kind of kill him off for free. He's not yet level six, and when he returns, he's going to be exp deprived. Uh, as well as this, <laughs> this Justana is going to have a hard time farming underneath tower with three people on him. But all right, little disengage right there from uh, from both sides. I think TC is just going to walk away happy with that first blood. 
And, yeah, uh, I, control. I was so, I was so rooting for Shadowy Figure to survive that I think with the reaction that he, sh the reaction speed that he showed, uh, pressing that on or pressing the stopwatch when he knew for sure that he was going to get hit by the seismic shove, I thought he deserved to make it out of there, but it wasn't to be. Another seismic shove is going to miss on an Infernal Susan. Good popping of the spell shield before attempting to use that one. Yep, there is a little bit of of a bug uh, with pretty much all spell shields, which is if you use two abilities too close uh, to each other, it the spell shield will actually negate uh, both abilities, and this is evident with Nocturne, Sivir, and Melzahar's spell shield. Yeah, I believe that was that was actually fixed uh, a couple patches ago, I think almost a couple months ago at this point, um, at least for Sivir's spell shield. I'm not too sure about Malzahar. I'll but... try and take their word for it, but it happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and sometimes they say one thing and they forget to put it in. It actually means another. going down bot lane. Yeah, good double stun from Shadow Figure. There is Arbor Arborary stopwatch, but he's in trouble. He still has the ultimate, but Hello I'm Hank jumps forward after he knows that one's down. Southwind, meanwhile, is just going to saunter out of there. It doesn't take too much damage from Hello I'm Hank. Yeah, UT San Antonio's bot lane really capitalizing on uh, on something that TCU's bot lane did not notice, which was Zaya's completely out of mana. So she did not have the means to escape that fight safely, and they engaged while they weren't really. Well, TC's bot lane wasn't really paying attention. Mm. Smelling. Uh, yeah, I was going to say a possible dive just because Shadow Figure and Hello I'm Hank both still had their ultimates, but I, it's not something you go for a 2v2 at this, bit, at this point in the game, I think. Especially underneath a tower versus an Alistar. Right. Even an Alistar without Unbreakable Will left. So we'll actually see. Uh, top lane being the island that is that it is notorious for. Uh, nothing really happening. Top lane, both players just farming up, but uh, I wonder if Nick is going to start putting pressure up there because of that Kleptomancy, because of that scaling with the gangplank. Uh, looks like some resurgence for T San Antonio and uh, the mid and jungle duo are going into Dragon to try and ward it up because both teams really trying to contest this Infernal Dragon. Yeah, I just took a quick look at the gold leads right now, and despite being roughly even in CS, Wante Asian's already 700 gold ahead of his opponent. Just from Kleptomancy and from GP passive, I'm assuming, or Parlay passive, I'm assuming. Transmuted gold gets a nice picture perfect knockup from his own pillar. It's going to call down the Force God to try to get one more knockup onto Wante Asian, but Wante Asian's very fast. Oh, Force uh, Flash. Oh, I'm Infernal Student's gonna go down, Lemur taking a turret shot, but it's not enough to return that kill. Well played now, 22 CS ahead and 2 kills on Lemur's Talia. Yeah, we need, we really need to see uh, both teams capitalize. I think UT San Antonio needs to capitalize off their bot lane, and TC needs to capitalize on their mid lane. Uh, they're both really trying for this Infernal Dragon. As you can see, they're controlling, uh, TC's controlling the top side, and UT's trying to fight down from the bottom side. But it is kind of a bad choke, especially up versus Atalia and in Alistar, but they're taking the fight anyway, engaging onto the dragon. Here we go. Southwood preemptively pops the Unbreakable Will. Lemur hops off his wall early to try to get into this fight, but teleport's coming down from top lane. Shadow figure's a little bit low, gets the Cosmic Radiance in time to sub himself. Nyx gotten down a little bit too close down here, has to flash over the wall, isn't able to flash away from the parlay though. Lemur, meanwhile, did get the Malzahar ulti, gets knocked away to safety by Tristana ultimate though. Seismic shove to keep him alive. Southwind, meanwhile, is the only target left for San Antonio to go for, but they aren't able to grab him. Meanwhile, the dragon's still alive, so that San Antonio can pick that one up, did get a kill on Nick, who wasn't able to flash out of there in time, and are able to pick up this dragon, so well played by San Antonio. Yeah, they did start that dragon a little bit preemptively on, on TCU's side. I believe they did have the vision. Um, they didn't know they were in the tri-bush, but uh, they did have the vision towards the top side, so they should have, I believe, expected an engage coming from the bottom side, which they could have really held off that choke with an Alistar Telia combo. I'm not really sure where that fight went wrong, but it looks like uh, GP's uh, team fight potential really coming in uh, as opposed to Orin's. Yeah, un unfortunately, I think TCU just playing really, really telegraphed during that entire fight. I think like little things like Southwind popping on Breakable Will. It's just a very clear sign. Hey, I'm going in, and then Wanta Asian immediately begins channeling that teleport uh, to come down and fight that one. Or maybe it was Infernal Season. Either way, um, well, good map presence. I think it's the same map presence that they've disp been displaying pretty much. Pretty much all, pretty much the entire match. I think both teams are very aware of um, what their teammates are doing. So communication is definitely not not the issue. It's just you know, even if you communicate perfectly, if your plan doesn't work, then it doesn't work. The yeah, overall uh, 
both teams' visions are very good right now. Uh, it looks like TC is prioritizing that Rift Herald a little bit heavier at the moment, and they're gonna go for a little push on that, but we'll see. Sejuani's kind of hiding right here, waiting for the right moment to strike against Nick. And we can see a 2v2 potential. No, it looks like TC is just gonna disengage. Uh, both junglers a little bit on Ooh, the Ooh, cheeky line. double stun on the south wind, but Hello M. Hank is focusing the wrong target in my opinion. D was it knocked away? The jump, enough to get it back into range, but again, you're going onto an Alistair, uh, who's level 7 already, it's gonna be really hard to kill. Yeah, I believe, uh, they... UT San Antonio is really, uh, pushing this advantage with their, with their jungles, jungler's utility very well, because you shouldn't really see... Oh! Yeah, another meanwhile. grass going onto the mid lane. Mm -hmm. Lemur's in a little bit of trouble. Immediate cleanse. Almost a perfect Captain Jack, but another stun from Tarsio is going to lock him down just in time for Tarsio to pick him up. Yep, right there is what I was just about to say is they're really afraid of that Sejuani uh, Malzahara combo with that count, uh, with the crowd control. Sejuani just filled with crowd control as well as Malzahara's ult being an on click stun. Uh, they're a little bit afraid because they're not really sure if Kane can out damage uh, with. Sejuani's utility going on, and he is pretty under level. Uh, pretty contrary to what we saw earlier in the game. Sejuani's stealing away uh, Nick's blue buff. Yep, there it is. Uh -oh. And not much they can do about it because they could get collapsed on 4v3. Yeah, Nick wants revenge though, but an untransformed Kane doesn't really have much to say in terms of revenge. is gonna get knocked away by Southwind, but another double stun across the wall. Prompts Hollow and Hank to jump in. There's the Umbral Trespass to try to keep himself a little bit alive, but Nick dies while inside Tarsier. That was a little weird. And meanwhile, Transmuted Gold finds Wanta Asian between between him and his turret. Wanta Asian is going to walk right out of there, though, winning that trade despite the early front loaded damage from Orn. Yep, that's that utility that everyone picks Sejuani for. That is why she is such a high ban, high tech rate champion in, in the LCS and uh, across League of Legends in general because of her utility. Her utility is so great. They won that fight. Even without uh, her ult in the beginning, uh, they just got a perfect collapse on 4v3, and TCU got a little bit greedy, did not fight with their mid laner. Yeah, and Nick doesn't have the early lead that he had last game, where, well, not even not even up, up not even up on CS, just getting a couple of early kills and having a uh, very good map presence with Lemur. I think earlier on when they were doing that invade, that was that was a glimpse of the coordination that they're capable of, and then after that point, just not able to make it happen anymore. Tarsier coming into his own as the game came as the game went on. Southwind though engages yet again on Hello I'm Hank who has the jump, but oh. Lemur has something to say about that. Floats in on the wall from downtown, and Hello I'm Hank is being abused right now. Lemur picks up that kill. Nick could be looking for the tower dive on the Shadowy figure. Yeah, that looked like uh, Lemur's brain just kind of kicked into uh, a little bit of a carry mode. Saw the perfect opportunity. Uh, UT San Antonio overextending right there, and they'll they'll be able to trade this tower right back. Except they won't get that first blood tower gold. Uh, and it looks like Lemur is coming right back. He might have to fight this 2v1 situation. Sejuani on the flank. Yeah, I don't know if he knew that Tarsi was right behind him. There's another grass, but Infernal Susan's going to go down to the turret. Well played by Lemur, who wasn't able to survive, but Orin could be looking for something more. Tarsi just way out of range from him, though, but that gives Wante Asian free reign on the top turret, so I don't know if that was worth it for Orin to come down as well. Yeah, really Ooh, nice Nick, though. counter engage. Tarsier and smited for the heal. There's the Umbral Trespass. It's going to get a little bit of damage down, but not so much because Kane is so weak this point in the game. Yeah, it looked like there was some uh, doubts on going in that gauge. Yeah, it does look like Southwind did not have Unbreakable Will right there. So if he did, I believe we would have saw full-on dive right there and probably trying to escape from the Invincible Terror. So despite mid-turret staying alive, Wanta Asian was able to take down top. So two turrets to one so far. Not, not unsalvageable by the side of TCU. Not not as bad as their first game where they lost all three outers um, to none. But the gold lead is definitely starting to slip in the favor of San Antonio. I think that you, you look at GP's gold real quick right now, we're looking at about 7,600 to 5,300. I, I don't even know how that happened. You, you look at the numbers, it just doesn't really make any sense. But then you remember yep. how it's gangplank with kleptomancy. Wonderful. That kleptomancy really coming in handy. Only a 9 CS lead for gangplank and that much of a gold lead. That is incredible. A 3v3 happening down this mid lane. They really want to get this turret pushed down so they can have even more map control over this dragon that's just spawning right now, as well as the Rift Herald that has not yet been claimed. Will we see... I wonder if we'll see anyone claim that Rift Herald because it is coming up on that Baron spawn. 
Yeah, Hello on Hank is also very strong. He's he's up a good 40 CS right now, and it's Tristana with an item and a half. That's when she really starts to come online and start hurting. I mean, if you look at Arbor, he's only got his finished Essence Reaver and not much else to speak of. Yeah, the item's looking pretty weak uh, for TC side. Hello on Hank uh, already has that zeal, already has the components in the working of. There's the Forge oh, God called down. down onto the shadowy figure who is now a shadowy dead figure. But Hello I'm Hank gets <laughs> caught between a rock and an Orin. Transmuted Gold is going to find him, forcing the flash away from Hello I'm Hank. They're not going to be able to find much more other than that support so far. That could give them uh, more control over the dragon. Good amount of damage from Talia onto the minion wave and the enemy champions. Nick's a little low to be contesting this dragon, but they're going to try to pick up the Scuttle Crab instead. Arceo is going to get rooted, but oh, the stun on the south who doesn't pop the ulti until that stun pretty much expires. But this is a 5v4 right now as Hello I'm Hank goes down to Arborary. But meanwhile, the uh, Sejuani is going to get picked up. One of their strongest frontline members is gone. That's going to give Dragon right over to TCU. Yeah, I'm not really sure what we saw there. It looked like UT San Antonio had the edge right there, getting a. a a Sejuani ult and a, a Sun onto Southwind, who, which really caught him off guard. You can see it really caught him off guard because he did not hit that Unbreakable will uh, nearly in time. But it looks like they're countering with a duo on the Rift Herald. Yeah, I mean, uh, meanwhile, Nick did transform in between those last two team fights, and he started off that fight pretty low. But after going after going for the uh, Reaper transformation, the Umbral Trespass gives you so much healing coming out of the tail end of that spell. Uh, really left him in a, such a such a good position to take the dragon afterwards. Because other other than that, I think that's probably what they saw. They saw the jungler low. If you can take out the jungler, then you can negate a lot of the ability to take down neutral objectives. Yeah, blue buff going over to lemur. Uh, wow, just pressure. in time. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, they really got that rift held just in time. They're going to be using it to push down this mid lane. It looks uh, a three man push down here. The only person to defend it is a Southwind. Are we coming in the back? And it looks like the entire team of TC is barreling down mid lane, but they're gonna go for a counter push as five down in bot. Uh, Orn does have teleport, but it looks like he's not prioritizing this push. He's warding up, which means it doesn't look like TCU has any vision coverage in their blue side jungle, which is gonna be extremely dangerous for them. A lot of pick potential from this team, from Malzahar ult and Sejuani's crowd control, as well as Gangplank's uh, call down with his global ultimate. And it looks like they're going to trade this. A lot of poke damage going on to Shove's going to push Shadowy Figure to his death. They're going to pick up the turret as well. Suppression going down, but he's not the target of the turret shots. Means Nick might be able to survive this one. Just kidding. Spade Sades bleeds him to death. Wanta Asian wants blood as well, but Infernal Season's going to walk forward. Southwind's going to get stunned up in the middle of the MET. Meanwhile, Arbury died a double kill for the Gangplank, and he's getting fed out of his mind. Yeah, Lemur really had to back off there. Uh, a little bit of a greedy tower push. Uh, they really wanted that mid lane turret, and... Okay, it doesn't look like too much is going to happen, but now that Baron spawned just in time, everyone on uh, UT's team is pretty healthy except for Infernal Susan, but Gameplay does have those oranges, even then it's okay, and it only looks like they're not really going for a huge push on this. It doesn't look like they're confident in their abilities. Never mind. Ooh, what am I shut saying? down on the GP. It was just way too low after taking up that Baron. A double kill for Lemur. He's looking oh for a triple. God. He's got three. The flash forward means he can't flash back onto Tarsier, but Shadowy Figure is going to stop that one. Tarsier's hanging around, though. He could be putting himself in a bad spot. Lemur's looking for four. The flash away from the last rocks. Able to keep him alive. That's four. That's technically a quadra kill of it for all of those keeping track at home. And that's Baron warded off by actually they're gonna they might be able to start this one off as well. Yeah, they're gonna go for it. That was such an early Baron attempt too, from the side of San Antonio. Just the respawn timers are just way too short to be attempting something like that, especially when they're very fed mid laners still alive. Yeah, the respawn timer is definitely a good point because wow, they were not expecting TCU's uh mid laner and top laner to be able to 2v5 that entire team. Uh Baron was just chipping down at them with that AoE uh magic. Magic resist redu reduction, which is extremely good for an Orn Talia combo. Uh, amazing play, catching everyone off guard there by Lemur, uh, and just bursting everyone before anyone noticed. Uh, he got three. Oh, he got those initial three kills incredibly fast. Yeah, and I was talking about uh, Talia's redemption arc earlier. I think he's. I think Lemur certainly made it happen already. Now it's the chance to see if he's able to keep that momentum going before people like. Uh, Wanta Asian and Hello I'm Hank are really able to come online. We saw in that last fight, um, just not really able to make it happen because they were already so low when that fight began. And just like that, TC is able to crawl back uh, and 
actually establish a gold lead for themselves. Uh, not too big of a gold lead, but they came back from a 4,000 gold deficit, and now they're leading by about six to 700,000, or, si well, that'd be a lot. Six, uh, around nine, oh, it's actually coming up to 1,000 gold right now. Uh, so they've crawled back into the game, they've evened up the towers, and it looks like right now it's a matter of map control because TCU is going to barrel down this bot lane with full Baron on their team. Yeah, for every extra bit of gold that Gangplank is grabbing over his opponent, Lemur is answering in kind. He's got a 60, 65 CS lead over his opponent now already. Meanwhile, Wanta Asian oh. ooh, could be caught in here. <laughs> Lemur that's, just that's keeps on coasting. Fun. The extra movement speed from the passive coming into play there. As Nick ca catching off the backside, Cosmic Radiance is going to come down and try to prevent a little bit more damage, but Infernal Susan already forced to flash away from the fight. Meanwhile, Transmuted Gold has teleported in, takes down the Tarek. Tarsier has to dash out of that one, then GP ultimate goes wide. TCU able to walk out of that one, but a flash engage on Wanta Asian, who's alone, has his own flash, but transmuted gold, pops a third one, takes him down. Yep, TCU is slowly reeling in this win. You can actually see, so, uh, the way CLG plays uh, is notorious for playing when they had double lift on the team is protect the double lift comp, protect everything, buff the double lift comp, that's, that's exactly how they played. But we don't really see that coming up from TCU. However, Lemur is playing like double lift, like an absolute carry in this game. And you could see how scared UT was of, of Lemur. They they wasted the entire Glacial Prison on just him. It missed. And they were able to TCU was able to get a perfect counter engage off Ooh! without oh, our very going down to that singular tower shot. A little bit too greedy right there. Yeah, yeah, we could we could see even with that uh with the cosmic radiance from Tarek. There was just too much CC and not enough utility coming back from UT's side to answer that team fight. Yeah, the caster from TCU compares Lemur to double if seems legit. <laughs> <laughs> Completely not biased, you know. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, it is, it is, is insane. A double you lift of see. sorts. So for his performance did have a replace it all. Oh, smite cheeky away. smite away. Lemur's gonna go home. Maybe a little bit maybe a little bit sad about that one. So Does have a so the reason I compare him to Doublelift is because if you see any team, or at least any North American team back in the day, that went up against Doublelift, everyone would try to kill Doublelift, which is not the exact right way to go about uh, for, like playing against that comp. But it looks like Wanted Asian. What are you out. doing over there, Wanted Asian? Does oh, didn't use the stopwatch, stopwatch the entire game, able to keep him alive against Nick, who ultimate isn't effective as a result. But Southwind's gonna go down in his place. Wanted yep, Asian that stopwatch bait. Oof. Yeah, and wants an Asian he able held to prevent that. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> held that stopwatch for a very long time, for sure. Yep, and it looks like counter push, 4v5, or 5v4 push, coming down, and will we see a Cosmic Radiance coming down? Yeah, this is a turret. Shadow Wave figures the first to go down means this is now a 4v4 fight. Underneath the turret as well means Tarsier has to flash out. I don't think this is going to go so well for them, but Infernal Susan held onto the ultimate the entire time. A double kill. Or Gangplank. 6-2-2 two, and two now. We saw him come huge within the last 30 seconds in this game. So we can actually see the power of, well, first off a 5v4, but the power of a team comp with that much utility, because uh, you can actually, you, you can actually see, uh, besides the fact that they didn't have Southwind, they collapsed really well on that, uh, but kind of messily. You could see a lot of miscommunication because uh, Shadowy Figure did not actually even cast Bastion on another player, so he did not have that double Cosmic Radiance going down. Mm. So he kind of went in solo, Cosmic Radiancing himself, and he actually didn't end up even getting it off. He got bursted down way too fast when he beneath the tower versus Lemur uh, to actually get anything off. So, really surprising fight. Uh, going down in favor of <laughs> that weird tower dive, going in favor of uh, UT uh, San Antonio. Yeah, TCU, I think, just let down their guard a little bit too early uh, in that fight. They, there was a scenario in that where they could have turned that around, but instead, I think Infernal Susan still not having used his ultimate, saving it for a priority target. Um, and then, meanwhile, Hello, I'm Hank was just free-hitting that entire time. Makes a lot of sense. You got a three-item Tristana. Uh, just finished her second zeal item, and it's going to be extremely powerful coming into team fights. Despite only being one and three, I expect that scoreline to change very rapidly. Yeah, I believe San Antonio really has to push down, uh, or, excuse me, San Antonio has to, has a lot of options right now. They can reel out the, or they can play out this game for a while because they have that scaling Tristana. She has three items compared to Zaya's two and a half items, and she's only going to scale even better than Zaya. 
Uh, Orn not really coming too well into play right now, and towards the late game, Tristan is going to shred through that health bar like like a hot knife through butter. And it's looking, even though she is 1, 3, and 4, that Tristana is a hyper carry. That's why they banned away that Kog'Maw and banned away that, uh, I, if I would believe, I think it's, I'm not really sure what that second AD carry was, but a no, little there bit was a Varus ban. To, <laughs> oh, a Varus ban, yeah. So they're really banning out, they wanted to ban out that late game, but they left up that Tristana. And that Tristana is going to be key to winning this game right now. TC is going to have to play really aggressive and not let that Tristana scale up. Ooh. Nick wasn't able to Reaping Slash away from the stun, but the call of the Forge God lands on the Tarak, who does get the two target Cosmic Radiance now. And now the Gangplank Ultimate slows their retreat, means that Zaya's in place for the stun from Sejuani. Wants Agents on a Rampage. The wall's going to cut off too, prevents the rest of this fight from happening. Nick popping into the wall for a quick little heal, but that is one down on the side of TCU and probably the turret for them as well. Yeah, you can really see that late game Tristana coming in with that rapid fire can, and she fires her auto attacks from so far away. Uh, but it looks like a little bit of a counter engage on. No, it looks like they're just going to disengage that, and it is five v four right now. It is a very dangerous play to be going for that Baron that just spawned uh, mm -hmm. for TCU, so they're not going to have any vision on this. And it looks like D San Antonio really trying to push this game to a win right now. Arborary just respawned, and Infernal Susan, meanwhile, is bot lane, but he does have the teleport available. Doesn't mean, er, it means that Transmuted Gold might be looking for something here. Smelling an opportunity there is Tristana is actually topside. Yep, they do not have their ED carry or mid laner, so this is going to be uh, granting TCU full reign over vision control, because everyone from UT San Antonio is actually backing. Uh, it looks like they're actually going to come in re-engage on this. Yeah, I don't, I don't want TCU to start this Baron right now. I don't think that's a good idea for them. Warren caught on the wayside a little bit. Pulverize is going to miss completely, but Dazzle does not. Southwind could be in trouble. Might have to use his ultimate to try to stay alive. Nick trying to play uh, defensive on the other side. You get a knock up on two. The disengage from both teams as neither of them really look to commit to that one. Speaking Southwind. of commitment, though, there is the gangplank ultimate to try to slow those two on the other side. Nick is now alone. Talia's a little hesitant to get in that one. Yeah, good patience uh, coming up from Southwind, not pulling that card out too early with that ultimate. And in fact, they did waste uh, the cannon barrage from Gangplank, so that's going to be important in this this type of choke uh, fight with the Baron. And it looks like <laughs> a little bit of a jungler to jungler scuffle in the Baron pit. 1v1 me at Baron, bro. So Tarek just recalled. There's more recalls to stop the ports coming in from Ram. Call the Forge God's not going to stop much though because they didn't hit anyone. But meanwhile, Tristana walks oh forward just a little bit too far. Kane sees the opportunity, goes for it. Orin picks up the kill. Lemur on the up. Meanwhile, is a little bit low. GP's looking for some cheeky backside plays. The ignite's ticking, but it's not enough to finish her off. And meanwhile, GP's now the one that's caught. Lemur's not back He's in this alive. fight, but GP, oh, was able to pick up the kill. Unstoppable now as the uh, ultimate from Kane wasn't able to finish him off. But transmuted gold trapped by his own teammate's wall. As he goes oh, down to that no. one. Double kill for Gangplank in that fight so far, but Southwind still has something to say about that, despite the rest of his team having to limp back to base. Yeah, we can see the difference in the uh, in in team fight potential. Uh, besides the fact that the Tristana got burst down instantly, was completely out of that fight. Uh, Arborary was in that fight the entire time. Actually hit a really good QSS onto the Nether Grasp of Malzahar and started hitting, putting out a lot of DPS, but it was not enough compared to that. Uh, to what a mid-game 30 to 31 minute Tristana can do, even though she wasn't in the fight. And it looks like Ocean Drake is gonna go down to UT San Antonio, the third dragon of the game, uh, coming in with those avatar elements, every single one of them. Yeah, after yeah. sniping down the enemy hyper carry, that team fight is yours to lose, TCU. But I guess they weren't able to account for Wanton Asian also being extremely fed right now. He's got four completed items, just sold his Targon's Embrace for another BF source, so five damage items from the GP. I think, you know, the more you prioritize the GP, the more the Sustan is going to be an issue for them. And it, it's 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 really hard for, for, for TCU to deal with two hyper carries if you want to consider GP as one. Yeah, GP is basically another AD carry, and Nick bobbing and weaving around these stuns, and a permafrost caught up and down on him. And Can't stop the targeted one, though. Gets a massive heal from Mumble Trespass, but is it enough? He's going to die to Hello, I'm Hank regardless, and that's a 4v5 fight. Now the... the sorry, the Targon's... Bleh. 
Terracolton's gonna stop the damage with a double kill for Tristana, and another lockdown from Infernal Susan, two kills for GP as well. Hello, I'm Hank, trying to cut away the last remaining team member of TCU, but I don't think he's long for this world. Whoa! Gets knocked away almost to safety, a triple for Gangplank, and that's 12 kills now for the GP. He hasn't died in the last six kills that he's gotten. Yeah, we've been talking about the mid lane and the ADCs, but want an Asian, uh, want a Asian actually, coming in clutch with a 12, 2, and 4 score, carrying UT San Antonio to victory in a lot of these team fights. You can actually see when when these team fights occur, uh, all of your standard ults go down: the Glacial Prison, the Cosmic Radiance. But the DPS is really what matters in here. You can actually see want an want a Asian. Firing away with those barrels, doing causing a lot of AOE damage to TCU, and they simply don't really have the DPS with uh, Talia and Azai to keep up with UT's, UT's damage. And down goes Baron. So it looks like, yeah, TCU has a mountain to climb. That gold lead's gotten extended back to over, let's see, 8,000, nearly 7. Nearly 8,000 gold. Yeah, so they have a mountain to climb if they want to win this game, and this is the final game of the set. Yeah, it's just so hard for TCU to win teamfights at this stage. They essentially have to get two perfect picks in a row on the top laner and the AD carry of the enemy team, and then even then, Infernal Susan on a Malzahar at this stage in the game, he's no slouch. Like, Malzahar does quite a bit of sustained damage the longer the fight goes on. So, mean so basically, as long as not all three of their carries are indisposed, it's almost impossible for TCU to win a straight-up fight. Yeah, Malzahar, known as uh, one of those control mages, however, very immobile, uh, except for Infernal Susan positioning extremely well in most of, in the majority of all these team fights, not really getting caught out and placing those nether grasps really well, uh, so where he can't get hit and his team has perfect a perfect amount of room to peel for him. And, okay, it looks like... Baron, this Baron push with just the duo of the bot lane going down into their inner tower, or their inhibitor tower, and Tristana is just so strong at this point in the game with Baron, and these melee minions coming in is just going to make it even harder. I think TCU realizes they have to engage right here. Yeah, TCU is hemorrhaging so he heavily, and they decided no more. Arbory takes down Tristana almost immediately. This looks a little bit familiar. GP is not in the fight just yet. He's now raving just now, just as two of his team members go down. This could be the fight that TCU needs. But Wan and Asian still very healthy. Duds pop the cannon barrage. He's still ex doing tons of damage. Wan and Asian is now legendary. Picks up another one. Actually, Malzahar picking up the second one means their tank line is down. Southwind's gonna go down to Gangplank. Now 14 kills. Now an another renewed effort from San Antonio as they continue with the Baron buff push after winning that team fight two for three. Yeah, and San Antonio still has Malzahar and Gangplank alive with this Baron buff. Sejuani there to tank for them. TC really only has all oh, the Nether Grass. Oh, goes instant down suppression. And blown and up instantly that crit from that burning strike. I don't even think he shot him. I'm pretty sure he just flashed in. The flash auto attack. Yeah, you flash in and cut him down. It looks like San Antonio is going for this game winning push. Let's see if Arbury can hold it for 8 seconds, 10 seconds for Alistar as well as Kane, but this does look like the end of the set. Yeah, he's very alone right now, and with Kane, the 2 and 7 Kane being his only respite, it's not going to be enough. Wanta Legend, or Wanta Asian, want, should change his name to Wanta a Legendary at this point, because he very much is, ends the game 16 and 2 with that final cheeky kill onto Arborberry, and secures a victory for his team. So GG to San Antonio for picking up the match win over Texas Christian University.